Welcome everyone to the first ever cohort call on eLife Innovation Leaders. I am based in Rotterdam. Currently in Ottawa. I am a junior PI and group leader at the University of Edinburgh. I'm a researcher at uh, Sony Computer Science Labs. I'm from Paraguay. I live, I live in Asuncion. I'm a postdoc in neuroscience at the City University in New York. Without further ado, I'm going to introduce today's guest speaker. By knowing like what everyone's there for, which may be different, but also having a shared purpose, they're ready to use the fact that they're a community initiative uh, uh, to really empower their project and um, uh, people will keep showing up if it works for them. Today we're talking mostly about this design step and how can you design your community so that people can collaborate. They actually have to investigate if the problem actually exists or they're not just only the ones experiencing the problems. You can really ask, put on your sticky, what do you think is our objective? How do you think, our, what do you think are the activities to get there? And then like, you know, you can ask, okay, now we have 50 things that we want to do. Can we do it now? I just want to stress here the, the importance of uh, low fidelity representation. Uh, first, because it allows, let's say, picky people to uh, to focus on problem scoping and on the question of workflow and interaction, etc., and not on details. So you ask, what is the big picture? And then continually check in with yourself and say, does this piece of the project contribute to the big picture? Even if your project is almost bare, empty, you can use some of the features like the issues to record and store very useful information that you might want to kind of come back to and share. So one of the things that is really great for personas is once you've done a set of them, you can look at them and say, what haven't I captured here? And is it important that I capture something that isn't present here? We try to not just think about the best case scenario or not only your uh, target users you've all been talking about, but also um, what are sort of the, how are they going to use systems when they're under uh, stress or um, in a more high risk situation? And like the spinny button at the pedestrian crossing, if you're sighted, you probably won't even notice that these things are in place. They won't impinge on the way they use and operate the site at all, but they can make a huge difference to the people who need them. So there are three or four things probably that you need to take out from this slide. is creating opportunities, empowering them so they can act, and also achieve a positive outcome at the end. I think the equity becomes ubiquitous. Like when you feel that you are in a place where you really belong, where everyone is kind of um, accepted. In the carpentries, retention is mainly the effort of community members. So people meet, they collaborate on some work, but then that has mostly developed into long-term friendships and partnerships between organizations. Doing this kind of small scale and in this very intentional and listening mode enables us to be responsive and build gradually to what the members need. My summary of it is it really is both an activity and a resource so the process of doing it is valuable but also the thing that comes out of it particularly valuable. Those hypotheses that carry a lot of risk but also a lot of potential value um, are going to be the ones that you you want to build experiments to test first. What you're looking for here is are there enough people for whom having adjustability is such a huge issue that they're willing to overcome and route around and get past all of the obvious shortcomings of this stool um, in order to get that adjustability? You can encourage people, you can incentivize people, but unless that number is growing, then our business, our movement in the space is not moving anything in the space. Open source is a really effective way for you to kind of not just release what you're doing is open, but encourage open collaboration across different backgrounds and different types of experiences. The best you can do is like to try to speak with a lot of people and find those, those uh, that, that you can recognize rapidly. At the start of any marketing campaign, um, I think it's really, really important to think about your goal or your objective um, and what you'd like to achieve. When we were considering a potential business model, um, what we wanted to ensure was that we didn't really disadvantage any user group and um, we wanted to make sure we are going to be as open as possible. You really need to take both economic, social and environmental well-being seriously to become a sustainable project. The aim of this call 
is for our innovation leaders to introduce their projects and share their progress. We want to have a huge international network of open science communities all across, all across, uh, across the globe. And for this we made a starter kit. We're rolling out some, uh, a Google form for a survey to actually target our potential uh, trial uh, workshop uh, audience. And then I will start uh, finding test users, starting by people that are directly around me. It is really important to incorporate their feedbacks and include them during uh, the development of the projects. There's a different, basically a different technique um, of bringing this across, which we hope engages um, the audience more intensely and they will remember, identify with these stories a bit more. The below ones are some of the very important things which I learned from the program and uh, developing the project in an open, uh, in a very structured way. Three questions that, uh, that were brought out by you guys in the first demo presentation on week 10. Uh, that had helped us uh, think about the product we're creating. Hopefully after the summer we will be able to show that it was a really good idea to, in this case, not try to be an innovation leader, but rather be an innovation follower with some extra additions. What we've been focusing on is making sure that we have the infrastructure there so that when a community starts to develop, we can support it from, from day one. I'm looking for people with different uh, backgrounds and everything. So yeah, help if you can if you can reach them, please do. This particular exercise has turned into something much more and broader. So I, I think that was for me the beginning step. I've learned in doing the program that uh, a lot of things that I've never thought before. For example, uh, the importance of inclusiveness or thinking about. Uh, who uh, was uh, excluding of the in this process? I think probably one of the biggest things I've gained from this is how um, supportive the community is. It just feels like I'm a part of community. Of, I'm one of those people who do this and care about that. But also, it gives space to develop own way of approaching and dealing with things. <laughs>